Get Brock dear. Here's a quick primer on the F45 found in my SE Machinima series. If you're new here, consider giving it a watch. Link in the description. Starts you off at the first season of the prequel series. Uh, first episode starts off a bit slow, but trust me, it gets going. Give it a chance. I think you might like it. Uh, especially if you like militaristic um, settings. With, uh, with some humor, we don't take ourselves too seriously. And then one final thing, channel's getting a bit stagnant, so if you feel like it, give it a like, comment, and potentially even share it. Alright, sellout moment out of the way, let's get started. The F-45. As the name implies, this was meant to be a futuristic version of the modern, real-life F-35. This is a rehashed version, so to speak, done by Dauphin, a friend of mine, uh, who helps out with the series a lot. Uh, uses the old hull and cockpit and set up from the original and modernizes it with a slimlined mod list. Basically just tier thrusters, shield, and a open cockpit seat uh, is all that it has. This design was basically an attempt to make a realistically performing fighter for the series and other uses, and it does quite well in that regard. Original design had aerodynamic wings, but we nixed that in order to keep the mod list down and the aesthetic more slim light. We have shielding to offset the entirely light armored construction because light armor helps us keep our performance up, uh, performance of the fighter that is, and tier thruster to further augment its performance as a fighter. Uh, one big design feature in this was to make it handle like a fighter. It's very easy in SE to put thrusters in all directions, makes it look ugly, but also makes it perform more like a helicopter versus a fighter. We wanted to keep constant forward momentum with this design and have it turn and bank like a fighter. So you'll notice if you're astute that there's very little thrusters outside of the rear and bottom sections. This is to encourage it once again to use it like a real fighter. For anything other than slight maneuvering corrections you need to use the flaps and pull up on the stick and let lift, quote-unquote, handle the work. In this case, that's modeled by all the thrusters on the bottom. While the tail, fins, rudder, whatever, are all mainly here for aesthetic reasons, they do actually apply an ablative surface and weather a lot of incoming fire and protect the engines and the heart of the aircraft. So, we found this thing is actually surprisingly resilient, even when we don't have shields on it. If, you go, if we head over here and look at the cutout real quick, You'll notice the power plant of the ship is two reactors and uh, a battery bank, large battery bank, and the gyros are hidden in there as well. Not only does this provide armoring for the core of the ship, the reactors, uh, but it also allows it to operate in two different regimes. For low stress flying, you can almost entirely rely on the reactors while keeping the batteries in off or recharge mode. However, once you start maneuvering, that is pulling up hard on the stick, uh, trying to bank around aggressively, so on and so forth, and where you need to rely on the bottom thrusters, 
then you need to turn the battery banks on. Otherwise, you will crash into the ground. Weapon-wise, we kept it simple. Up here on the front, we have quad Gatling guns for fighter-to-fighter -fighter or similar combat. And then for larger area targets, we have a set of missiles. This thing is survival ready. You'll notice what you're able to recharge the Gatling turrets via this cargo container over here, which feeds into a conveyor system, which gets to the reactors and the Gatling turrets. The missiles must be reloaded manually as is this missile design on small ships. To get in the aircraft, there's just a little pain in the ass hole over here, which is a terrible set of words used in conjunction. Uh, but simply get in here and you have access to the cockpit. Let's make sure the batteries are on. They're usually set to auto, I just wanted the demo as for here. So you'll notice she handles quite well. You have the usual set of information. We got gravity and speed. We got power up ahead. A LCD that lets us know what blocks are damaged, which is useful when you're taking fire and you find out you know you lost your rear engine. Shields, and finally a very useful heads-up display. Mainly to know what orientation you're in, but also to get your rough velocity vector, which is that little yellow thing following around our true heading. Once again, you'll notice if we go sideways, the aircraft takes a long time to correct itself. However, if we go into a bank, the aircraft handles quite well. As long as you keep that velocity vector uh, very close to your heading, you can perform quite well. However, if you rip it like this, the aircraft tends to stall out. All right, I think that's about it. I should be rolling some footage throughout all of this to keep you guys entertained and kind of see how the aircraft does performance-wise. Um, make sure to check out the link here. It gives you a workshop link for the aircraft. Uh, once again, the series is also in the description where you can see this aircraft in action. And uh, that's about it. I'll see you guys around uh, in the next video.